A couple of days went by, and Scarlet was wandering in the Outlands. She was pacing back and forth while trying to think of a plan. She did want to kill Simba and Kiara, but was trying to figure out how to do it. What can I do? Zira's plan didn't work, and Scar's worked only for Mufasa. Scarlet growled while pacing. I just want to take back that was mine. I really do. Scarlet then wandered into the Pride Lands from the Outlands. Then she saw crocodiles. She saw a crocodile infested water. Water. This then gave Scarlet an idea. She had the most evil plan ever made. I got it. I'll lure Simba to the crocodile infested water. And then they'll eat Simba. Scarlet la said evilly as she cracked a cackled a laugh. I'll use a zebra full for bait. Or perhaps the lion guard would do. Ooh, come here. <laughs> I'll use the lion guard instead. <laughs> Good plan for me. Scarlet then ran off into the pry lands to fetch a zebra full, mainly to use it as bait. Kiara walked around the pride lands looking for Rafiki's tree as she was with Kovu. Kiara had been feeling early signs of pregnancy, which Kovu thinks it is possible. I hope it's pregnancy, Kovu. I just hope that's the case, Kiara replied with as she tried to climb up Rafiki's tree. However, Rafiki came down to see the two lions. Kovu! Kiara! Rafiki welcomed the two lions as he climbed down from his tree and Kiara backed down. So nice to see you all! What brings you here today? Rafiki then asked the princess and the young prince. We're here because we need to confirm something, Kiara began. I might be pregnant. Me and Kovu want you to confirm if it's pregnancy. Rafiki then looked at the lioness and he was confused. Ah, I see. What makes you think you're pregnant? Rafiki asked. Kiara and I wanted to have cubs of our own. It has been a couple days since we did... Kovu paused, not wanting to go into detail. I think you get the idea. I see. What symptoms have you been having, Kiara? Rafiki asked. I've been eating much as I normally would do, do eat, and I've been feeling cranky. Kiara began to explain. I've been feeling strange. Hmm, that sounds like pregnancy to me. It looks like you're pregnant. How long have you been acting strange? Rafiki asked. Well, at least 13 days ago, Kiara replied. My teats have been getting big and pink as well. Well, Kiara, congratulations! You're pregnant! Rafiki said cheerfully. Pregnant? Kovu asked in amazement. The wise mandrel nodded. Wow! Kovu began to jump up and down in excitement. He and Kiara were both going to be parents. How long are lions pregnant for? Lions are pregnant for 110 days, so Kiara will need to stay away from danger at all costs, Rafiki told Kovu. I see. With Scarlet around, that means I'll have to keep a close eye on he on her, her from here on out. Kovu replied. Simba told me about Scarlet. She did try to climb my tree the other day, but luckily Simba, Vitania, and Nala chased her back to the Outlands. Rafiki informed him. Man, she better stay away from us. Must Kovu began, especially on my watch. She isn't getting anywhere closer to Kiara. Kovu's eyes were enraged. Kovu, it's best if we don't get angry now, Kiara assured him. Kovu sighed and realized that what his mate said. You're right, Kiara. Let's go home and tell everyone the exciting news, Kovu said as he and Kiara both ran back to Pride Rock. Meanwhile at Pride Rock, Simba was watching over the Pride Lands for Scarlet, mainly because he wanted to keep the Pride Lands safe from danger. Nala walked up to Simba from the cave of Pride Rock. Simba, Kiara and Kovu will be fine, Nala assured him. But Simba was worried about his daughter and his son-in-law in the Pride Lands. Who knows? Who know, knew what that what could happen to them? Just then, Nala said that Simba said that. Just as Nala said that, Simba saw Kiara and Kovu both running up to Pride Rock. The two lions had big smiles on their faces. Simba had wondered what what his daughter and son-in-law were so excited about. Daddy, Daddy. Kiara said cheerfully as she and Kovu both ran up to Pride Rock to join Simba and Nala. Kiara almost knocked Simba down when she pounced on him for a hug. Whoa, careful there, Kiara. I'm not as young as I used to be. Simba chuckled as he nuzzled his daughter's nose. What's all the excitement from you two? Well, me and Kiara have great news to tell you all. Kovu began. 
Really? What is it? Simba asked. His daughter Kiara walked up to her father. At first, Simba thought something bad had happened, but that didn't turn out to be anything bad. In fact, it was great news. Well, Daddy, I'm pregnant, Kiara said to her father. At first, Simba laughed and thought Kiara was joking, but when he saw that Kiara wasn't joking, he flew his attention back to reality. You're pregnant, Kiara? Simba asked. I hope it's Kovu's child. Of course it is, silly. Kiara replied as she let out a chuckle. Kovu and I have wanted a cub or more for a long time. Isn't this amazing? Simba asked his mate Nala excitedly. We're both going to be grandparents. It was just yesterday when Kiara was just a cub. And now she's all grown up, Simba. She's not a little girl anymore, Nala replied. Where did the time go? Simba chuckled as he nuzzled Nala's snout. Are you excited to be both excited to be grandparents? Kovu asked the king and queen. Of course we are, Kovu. Nala replied, You and Kiara will be great parents. I just know it. Simba added, Meanwhile in the Pride Lands, where the outlines are, Bunga along with Kion, Anno, and Fully and Beshti were playing around. Mainly they were roughhousing until Bunga fell in the water. Bunga, are you okay? Kion asked. Yep, I'm okay, Bunga said as Kion looked over the river and he saw Scarlet about a few feet away from the crocodile infested waters. He then realized something wasn't right. Kion saw some crocodiles that were not far from where Bunga was standing. It's a trap! Kion said as he turned to his friends. Those crocodiles are going to eat Bunga. We need to do something, Fully said. I'll get Bunga out of here. Anno, get help, Kion ordered. We'll distract Scarlet, Besti said as he and Fully went off, off to distract Scarlet. Kion leapt on, leaped on some rocks in an attempt to save Bunga from the crocodiles. Well then, what do we have here? Scarlet snickered as she saw Bestie and Fully on the Outlands. We've heard of you. You're Zira's sister, Bestie replied. Plied. Kion was on the uh, rocks. He was close to Bunga. He then looked to see Free Crocodile sneaking up for an attack. Bunga, jump on my back! Heck, Kion ordered as Bunga jumped on on some rocks to get to... to... to get to Kion. But he missed and fell in the water. Hold on, Bunga. I'm coming. Kion called out to the honey badger. Meanwhile at Pride Rock, Anno flew down to see Simba, Nala, Kova, and Kiara outside. Simba, Kion, and Bunga are both in trouble, Anno exclaimed. Where are they? Simba asked. They're in a river near the Outlands, Anno re replied. What's happening there? Kiara asked. Scarlet is planning to get rid of Simba. Mainly she's using Kion and Bunga as bait, Anno explained. Get rainy. Anno, meet me and Kovu back. Back, We'll meet Kion and Bunga where the Outlands are, Simba ordered as he ran off. Kiara, stay here with your mother, Kovu Fu said to his mate. I don't want any harm coming to our unborn cub. Okay, Kovu, and be careful, Kiara replied. Kovu caught up with Simba and the two lions dashed through the Pride Lands. Bunga and Kion were surrounded by the crocodiles between the Outlands and the Pride Lands. Fully and Beshti were blocking Scarlet's path. Kovu and Simba, along with Anno, had arrived at the scene. Simba looked to see his son Bunga in trouble. Kovu, help Kion, Yan, and Bunga, Simba ordered. I'll get, I got your back. Kovu nodded and leapt down to the ravine, and he saw the crocodiles surrounding Kion and Bunga. He noticed that the tree was about to fall down at some point. He then had an idea. Kovu ran towards the tree and began to push it. Simba noticed Kovu's idea, so he went down to join him. The two lions both pushed as hard as they could until they, they, the tree gave away. The tree fell onto the river, and Kion and Bunga saw the prince and the king. Kion, you and Bunga get on this tree, Kovu said as Kion and Bunga did what the prince said. They dodged the crocodile's attacks. As soon as the lion and the honey badger got to the river, the other side, they, fell, they, ran, they went over to the outlands. Kovu, along with Kion, Simba, and Bunga, reached the Outlands to see Fully and Beshti blocking Scarlet's way. You're not entering the Pride Lands, Scarlet, Beshti had told the Outsider. Oh, yes I am, and you can't stop me, Scarlet growled as she... Scarlet growled as she swiped her paw at Fully, then she went on to attack Scarlet. Suddenly, Simba and Kovu both roared as Kion rushed to Fully's aid. Bunga and Anno joined in checking to see if the cheetah was okay. Fully, are you okay? Kion asked as the cheetah got up. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, Kion, Fully replied as Kion helped her up. 
What's going on here? Simba snarled at Scarlet. The outsider backed away slowly from Simba. And what do you have with the lion guard? I could tell you what happened. Kion began. You almost got me and Bunga killed. Yeah, that's right. It was a trap, Ano added. We didn't know you were planning on something, but thank God we both came, Kovu said with a rage building up. I was trying to use the lion guard as bait so I can finish Simba, Scarlet growled in rage. Well, your plan failed, Scarlet, but you're not going anywhere on my watch, snarled Simba and replied. Really, Simba, if you followed Scar and Zero's plan, everything would have been fine until Kiara got the outsiders to join your side. Scarlet glared at Kovu with hatred. Don't you dare say anything about my mate, Kovu growled. You'll never get the throne, you wicked old outsider, fully growled angrily. Lee added, oh yes, I will. Watch me. Scarlet was about to pounce on Simba when Kovu pounced on Scarlet, defending him from Simba from his aunt's attacks. Kovu, get off of her, Simba said as he and Kion tried to break up the fight, but it was no use. Kovu then pushed Scarlet with his back paws down to the ravine. Kovu only looked to see the huge wave of water rushing down the ravine, and it wiped out the crocodiles and Scarlet. Where is she? Ano asked. The lion guard along with Simba and Kovu looked in the river, but with no sight of Scarlet. They thought that she was gone. Well, I don't see her, Kovu replied. Neither do I. I think she's gone, Simba sighed in relief. That's awesome. Scarlet's finally done for, Kion replied. The lion guard along with Simba and Kovu returned to Pride Rock. Kiara and Nala saw that the king had returned. Kiara saw that Kovu was back with some cuts on him. She along with Nala ran down from Pride Rock to meet her friends and family members. Kovu, what happened to you? Kiara asked as she noticed some cuts on her mate. Kovu was attacked by his own aunt, Simba explained. She was trying to attack me. Simba, what happened? Nala asked. Scarlet was planning to use Bunga and Kion as bait, Beshti explained. Yeah, like Anno went I sent Anno for help, Fully added. And Beshti and Fully tried to keep Scarlet away from the Pride Lands. But thankfully Simba and Kovu showed up, Kion said as Rainy showed up with Itani. Their faces, the two lions were lying, lionesses were lying down when they heard the commotion. Scarlet could have killed you or Kovu, Kiara replied. Or the crocodiles. Scarlet was only, only trying to have me killed by them, Simba added with rage in his eyes. Where is she now, Simba? Nala asked, trying to calm her mates down. Scarlet fell into the river where the outlands are. We looked to see if we could find her. Kovu began as he groaned in pain from the cuts stinging him. Sire, the young prince seemed to be wounded, did Zazu said as he flew down to the king. Timon and Pumbaa saw what was going on, so they both headed their way towards Simba. You okay, pal? Timon asked. Yeah, I'm fine, Simba replied. Is Kovu okay? Pumbaa asked. He noticed Kovu having cuts on himself. He defended me from Scarlet, so he got a few minor injuries, Simba replied. I'll get Rafiki here. He can heal with those cuts before they get infected, Zazu said to the young prince. Yeah, that'll be great, Kovu replied. She may come back, though, Vitani warned, so we'll have to keep an eye out for her. That's if she shows up again, Rainy replied. Replied, like, I also stayed back just in case if she comes here. The only reason why I stayed behind is in case if Scarlet showed up here in Pride Rock. So you didn't come with us? Simba asked. I only stayed behind to keep Kiara safe. That was because she's pregnant, Rainy replied. She then sighed. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Hey, you did what you had to do, Kion re reassured his mate. As the evening went on, Rafiki healed, killed Kovu's cuts to prevent infection. The young prince felt better from the stinging, but he'll have to make sure not to lick any of, any of the wounds. You should be good for now, Kovu. If any infection starts, please let me know, Rafiki told him. All right, will do, Kovu replied. Kiara snuggled up beside her mate. She was wanting to fall asleep to the lion, the one lion that she loves so much. How you feeling? Lin, Lin, Kiara asked. I'm doing okay. These cuts are going to take a time to heal, Kovu replied as he licked Kiara's forehead. We need a minute for the un name for the unborn cub. Like a name for a boy and one for a girl, Kiara said. Well, there might be more than one in there, 
Kovu replied. He placed his paw on Kiara's stomach. Even if the cub was small, he wouldn't be able to feel it kick with kicks within a few couple of weeks. I'm gonna protect this cub with my life, even if I die protecting him or her. I know you will. My dad will be an amazing grandpa, and my mom would be a great grandma as well. Kiara said as Kovu came up with a question on the name suggestions. For a boy, what do you think of Kondo? It means a warrior. Your Kovu asked. I like the name Kondo for a boy. What about a name for a girl? Kiara asked. How about Belle for a girl? I know, I know it's not an African name, but it also means beautiful in Italian. Kovu said. Kiara liked the name, the name, and licked Kovu's muzzle. That's perfect. Kondo for a boy, and Belle for a girl. Kiara yawned as she smiled at her mate. You'll, you need sleep to sleep, my dear. I'll, I'll be here, Kovu said to the sleepy lioness. Kiara then began to fall asleep while snuggling up next to Kovu. Meanwhile, in the, out, in the rivers in the outlands, Scarlet got out of the water. She was all wet from head to tail. She was in a fit of rage. So, Simba thinks I can't get away with this? Well, I'll show him what I'm, ma what I'm made of. Maybe someday, when I feel that I'm ready. Scarlet growled under her breath. She walked until she found a cave covered for cover for the night. The outsider shook herself dry once she entered the cave and she lay, lay down on the cold, hard ground. She flexed her claws. She wanted her revenge on Simba along with Kovu and Kiara as well. No one defeats Scarlet. Scarlet growled, I won't give up. I will stand for you, Scar and to honor Zira.